Hi, welcome to another Deep Sea Foundation YouTube channel video. We are very honored today to be speaking to Dr. Daniel Liu with Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Chicago. And I would like to talk to Dr. Liu today specifically about when a patient goes in for breast reconstruction, Dr. Liu, how do they disseminate or how do they ask about the training that a doctor has? Because I know it's very important to patients. It was to me, and they look at curriculum vitaes and ask different questions. So what can you tell us about that? Well, thank you for having me here today, Terry. It's always great to talk to you. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, we're at Plastic Surgery The Meeting. So really great to see you here too. Lots of good information going on. That's right. Yeah. So you're asking from a patient perspective, what do you look for when you're uh, looking at the background of your physicians, especially plastic surgeons, when you're facing the decisions about breast reconstruction? Um, it's important to know that all plastic surgeons are trained in breast reconstruction, but not all of them may take a great interest in breast reconstruction and learn all the available techniques or offer all the available techniques such as microvascular flap reconstruction. Okay. All of us complete at least six years of postgraduate training, and that's following college and four years of medical school. Mm -hmm. So it's a rigorous program to get to the end. Mm -hmm. now, plastic surgery is a wide field that includes everything from congenital abnormalities to cosmetic surgery to treating traumatic deformities of the head, the face, the legs, everywhere in the body. Absolutely. And there's so many of those sessions here at the meeting, too, so I understand what you're talking about. Absolutely. So yeah. it's incumbent for training programs to teach all of us those important aspects of plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. While breast reconstruction does make up a large volume mm -hmm. of our training, it's not necessarily the strongest part of every single program, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think that surgeons who are interested in providing excellent breast reconstruction care to patients will seek out the training that they need. And that may be the form of additional microvascular fellowship training. Okay. And that's typically one year of additional training after a residency program. Right. But that's not always required to get a good plastic surgeon who is adept at performing free flaps. Mm -hmm. Not all microvascular fellowships are created equal, meaning that some programs stress uh, other types of cancers, such as head and neck cancers, right. where microsurgery is also used to a great extent. Mm -hmm and breast reconstruction may not be a focus of those programs. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing a, a surgeon, it's important to look at where they trained, mm -hmm. how many years they spent training, and if you know the surgeons in the field, then you'll know who they train with. Mm -hmm. But that's very difficult for a patient to navigate through, I think. It is. Would it be a fair question to ask a surgeon when you go in for your consult? Why did you specifically, um, you know, specialize in breast reconstruction over any other type of microsurgery? Would that be a fair question to I kind think of? Absolutely, that's yeah. a fair question, and it's also very fair to ask a surgeon mm -hmm. what portion of his or her practice is devoted to breast reconstruction. There you go. For example, I work for a cancer hospital and 85% of my practice is breast reconstruction. Mm -hmm. But in the community, um, a private practice plastic surgeon may have very little breast reconstruction but still offer it um, simply because there is less access to plastic surgeons in certain areas of the country. Mm -hmm. So it's fair to ask about the, the volume of the practice and also the number of procedures he or she has performed in breast reconstruction and specifically in the more difficult types of breast reconstruction such as perforator flaps, deep flaps, and the like that you've you've had listed on your deep sea website. Yes, yes. All of the different ones. There's different autologous type breast reconstruction from the inner thigh, the tug flap, pap flap, um, back of the buttocks, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So all of those. Yeah. yeah, and a surgeon who is well-trained but also humble will recognize his or her limits mm -hmm. and refer you to a more capable plastic surgeon if needed. So, for example, in my practice, we do very little stacked flaps from different areas of the body. Mm -hmm. And if I feel that a patient needs that, I would send them to a, a more adept center like the New Orleans Center for Restorative Breast Surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard from your patients you're a very humble man. 
Sometimes I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a good quality to have in a plastic surgeon, Dr. Liu, and patients appreciate that. We appreciate all of the information that you shared with us today, so thank you very much. Of course, anytime. Yeah, absolutely. And be sure to like, give us a thumbs up, uh, our YouTube channel, subscribe to us, and let us know if there are any other um, topics that you would like us to cover. Thanks again, Dr. Liu.